Stop 9, Cubilla Nord. As you walk down the trail, you will go through another gate, back into the farmer's field you originally came from. As you pass through the gate, you will see Cubilla Nord on your left side. Stop here and listen to the rest of Stop 9. Cupula Nord is a sister emplacement to Cupula Sud that we visited three stops before, and you can see across the field. These were known as Cupula Nord and Sud due to their geographical locations on the top of the fortress. The emplacements were capable of a 360 degree rotation to allow their 75mm guns to fire in any direction. On any given fire mission, the armored cupola rose 53 centimeters out of the ground to reveal its twin 75mm guns and their aiming periscope in between. Once the fire mission was completed, the cupola sank back into the ground where its armor plating made it immune to attack by conventional explosives. The outer shell was a single armored casting 38mm thick with two inner layers of steel plates each 2.5 centimeters thick, interspersed with a felt material lining. This configuration reduced the shock effect on the inside following any explosion on the interior of the cupola. The interior was also sealed against gas attack. The gun crew comprised three NCOs and 22 soldiers. The revolving cupola and gun room weighed 120 tons and was raised by a counterweight with the power for elevation and rotation provided by electric motors and a manual override in the case of malfunction. Five men operated the guns, two loaders per gun, and a gun layer seated between them manning the periscope and receiving orders through the headphones. The 75mm guns were specifically designed for this weapon system. It had a range of 10 kilometers and a maximum rate of fire of 25 rounds per minute, with a sustained rate of half that. The guns fired two types of high explosives and a canister round. The latter contained 205 lead balls, each of 1.5 cm diameter, for engaging personnel on top of the fortress. With a range of 400 meters, it was a devastating weapon against troops. This was a key emplacement that the German paratroopers realized needed to be taken out quickly if the attack was to succeed. Section leader Unger and Section 8's gliders flew a wide circle, trying to avoid anti-aircraft fire and came in low and fast from the south. The glider landed within 60 feet of Cupola Nord and immediately came under heavy machine gun fire, killing two German paratroopers, one the section leader Unger. Trooper Els took charge and immediately sprang into action and placed a machine gun to provide covering fire for the assault. A 50 kilogram hollow charge was placed on top of Cupola Nord and a 12.5 kilogram hollow charge against the steel entrance door at the back. The charges exploded with no visible effect. Another 50 kilogram charge was placed on the door and not only blew the door off the hinges, but also caused the surrounding concrete to collapse, sealing the entrance. Inside Cupola Nord, Sergeants Kip and Joris and the 75 millimeter gun crew were in position by 4.30 and reported seeing enemy activity. Sergeant Joris, Cupola Nord commander, realized what was happening on top of the fort, was in the process of carrying anti-personal ammunition up the staircase when the first 50 kilogram hollow charge exploded. Luckily for the Belgians, no one was in the turret. Trooper Els, seeing no visible effect from the hollow charge, directed another 50 kilogram charge be placed near the steel exit door. The second explosion damaged the electrical equipment and rendered the cupola inoperative. With the mission complete, Trooper Els took charge of Section 8 and moved to the platoon headquarters near Mead Nord. At 5.45, Major Jotran ordered the tunnel sealed and Cupola Nord abandoned. The German paratroopers were methodically eliminating all the threats posed by the fort artillery emplacements one by one. Now on to Stop 10. As you look over the battlefield, note the emplacement in the center of the farmer's field. Follow the path that goes from Cupola Nord to this emplacement. Note that when you finish this stop, you will be retracing your footsteps back to Cupola Nord and proceed with the tour along the embankment that runs to your right. Respect the farmer's property rights by staying on the trail. Proceed and listen to the information for Stop 10.